Uh, hey guys, uh, so I want to do a video on lithium iron phosphate basics, right? Uh, more and more people are watching the channel, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, but I want to make sure that when I'm talking about these cells, whether it's the lesion or the Eve cells or any of the lithium iron phosphate, iron phosphate cells, that I've covered the sort of absolute basics, things that you definitely need to know before you start working with these cells. So given that people are actually watching this channel a little bit, I think I should cover these really important things, okay? So let's talk about lithium iron phosphate cells. Uh, in particular, let's talk about the things you absolutely have to know, and then I'll talk a little bit about my personal experiences with those, with these rules, okay? But everything I'm about to go over, I think, is really, really important. The first thing is the voltages of these cells, right? You absolutely do, want, do not want to ever go below 2.5 volts per cell or above 3.65 volts per cell. Don't go above that. Don't go below that. You just want to stay in that 2.5 to 3.65 range. Do not go above or below those, okay? Those are really the absolute ranges. So you wanna make sure you're gonna have a BMS that's gonna protect your cells uh, from going above or below that. You also wanna make sure you set your solar charge controller to never charge above that. And if you can, try to set your inverter to never go below a certain, uh, whatever value that is. So if you have four cells, for example, uh, you wanna make sure your inverter never goes below uh, 10 volts, for example. That's usually not an issue, uh, but if you can set it, do it. So if you set your inverter, if you set your inverter to never draw too low, your solar charge controller never charge too high, and you've got a BMS ensuring the both of those things, you've got redundancy on both ends, and you're really unlikely to go outside that range. One thing I do want to mention though is I've read and have some personal experience with that these cells, if they're taken down as low as two, or as high as or taken as high as four, they can still be saved. So I, for example, have taken a cell uh, up to 3.8 by accident slightly discharged it, got it back in the range, then I did a capacity test and it was still okay. Uh, so if you have a cell that's maybe 3.8 volts uh, or you have a cell that's maybe 2.2 volts, which is outside the range they should be in, they can still potentially be saved. I would apply a light current, something like 0.2C or less to try to, I would either use 0.2C to bring them up into the range or if they're above the range, draw down at around 0.2C and gently bring them back into the range and then uh, do a capacity test on them. Okay, uh, so if you accidentally slightly overcharge or slightly undercharge or slightly over discharge them, they might be savable. But that said, be very, very careful. And if you take them above four volts or below two volts, I would really, I would probably just try to recycle them or, or you know, get rid of them uh, in a safe manner um, because they really don't want to be outside that range. But again, never get outside of 3.65 volts, uh, 2.5 to 3.65 volts if you don't have to. There's no reason. Use a BMS. Be very careful. Use your chargers appropriately, but like just really, that's the easiest way to mess up your cells. The other thing is temperature. Lithium iron phosphate is better than almost any chemistry in a lot of ways. It's a lot safer. Uh, they, 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 they last for way more cycles than a lot of other chemistries, but they are a little bit more uh, sensitive to temperature, and that's something you need to be aware of. So for charging, these have to be above freezing to charge. So above zero degrees Celsius or above 30 degrees Fahrenheit absolute must, okay? And if you, char if you charge them below that, if your solar charge controller or whatever tries to charge them after below freezing, if they're frozen, you will permanently damage the cells and they will not be recoverable, okay? The uh, maximum temperature, at least for some cells is around, I see 65 degrees Celsius or 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, those are the maximum temperatures, but you really don't want to be even near that. I really, even above 110 uh, degrees or something like that, you're really starting to be in the danger zone, okay? So don't charge these if the temperatures, if they're at 120 degrees. And if you're building a case, or let's say you're putting them in an RV or a setting where they could get really hot, be aware of that. Make sure that they have good uh, airflow, um, maybe have a fan in there, whatever you need to do, but don't let these get too hot. Above 150C is absolutely going to damage them. Um, but even above 120, 100, like 100, even 100 degrees Fahrenheit, if you're consistently charging and discharging them at these higher temperatures, you're going to wear out your cells faster, okay? Discharging is a little different. You can discharge below freezing. You can discharge as low as negative 31 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 35 degrees Celsius. And it depends on the manufacturer. They might give you slightly different ranges for that. I've seen different data sheets. So always check the data sheets for your batteries. Uh, that's a good point in general. Uh, they might have different temperature settings uh, that they can handle, but for lithium iron phosphate, never charge below freezing. And discharge, you can discharge below freezing, but again, it's not great for your cells. They're not gonna love you for discharging them below freezing. So keep your cells above freezing to keep them in a good place and definitely don't uh, discharge them or charge them above 150 degrees Fahrenheit. But generally speaking, really try to keep them below 100, 100 degrees because they, they just don't like to be that hot. Um, it's going to affect their life cycle, okay? Two is when you're talking about voltages, right? Uh, the voltages on your batteries on, and on your cells are always going to dip when they're under load. They're going to dip more when they're at the high end of the curve or the low end of the curve under load, but you don't want to ever just 
test the voltages of your batteries under load and take that as gospel. You wanna make sure that you remove the load, whether you're charging or discharging them, whatever's on them, and test them without a load or charge on them to get the actual voltage, okay? Uh, also, I cover this in another video, but you definitely wanna balance your cells, right? When you get your cells in the mail and you're gonna construct a battery, you need to balance them. Now, there's top balancing, where you make sure they're all the same voltages when they're at the high end of the voltage curve, around, let's say, 3.65 at the very top, but even as low as something like 3.4, or you could do bottom balancing, bring all the batteries to a really low balance and make sure they're identical at that low balance, right? There's a lot of debate on top and bottom balancing and I'm not gonna go over top versus bottom balancing here. Suffice to say, they're both fine. Uh, do your research. In your solar setting, it seems like most people nowadays are happy with top balancing. If you really need to get all the juice out of your battery, if you're gonna go from 100% to zero all the time, you might wanna go with bottom balancing. Um, but generally speaking, they're both going to be fine. Just make sure you do it right. I have a video on top balancing, and if you want to see how I do it with these cells as cheaply as possible, please take a look. But be aware there are other faster ways to do it than what I'm going to suggest. I just know that most people probably are going to use these for solar, so they're only going to charge and top balance them once, and they want to probably do that as cheaply as possible. Um, so I think uh, those are the things that you absolutely need to know about batteries. Always top balance. The other thing is you absolutely want to use a BMS. Do not construct a battery without a BMS unless you really know what you're doing and you really have good reason. And I find it very hard to think that there's a good reason because it really won't affect the performance of your battery. And it's really a great backstop to make sure that you know things don't go wrong. Uh, but let's talk about some of the best practices for battery life extension. So one of the most important things that I can say in terms of if you really want to pump your cells you know, for as long as possible, if you want to get those 3000 cycles out of them or even more, um, you need to know that they are going to degrade over time. Almost immediately, they're going to go from having 100% capacity to 99 to 98. There's a pretty good curve on a lot of these that, you know, after maybe 3000 cycles, they might only be pulling 80% or 90%. It just depends on the cell and kind of your luck and, but also importantly, how you treat them, right? So there are a bunch of things you can do to make sure they last longer and you don't have to buy new cells uh, sooner rather than later. First thing is the 90-10 rule. Basically, use the middle 90% of your capacity. Don't use the full 100%. Don't charge things up to 3.65 volts per cell, then down to 2.5 volts per cell. Set your char solar charge controller, your inverter, and your BMS to try to keep your cells in that middle 80% of your capacity. That means charge them up, for example, to uh, 3.35 right? That's only 90% of capacity and discharge them only down to three, three volts. So stay between 3.35 and three, you're going to get that middle 90%. That's going to extend the life of your batteries probably noticeably. They just, they really don't like to be fully charged and fully discharged. It's just not what the cells are good at. That's when you might get, you know, when you fully charge and discharge, that's when you might get more expansion of the cells and some bulging is what people are talking about. And it generally just wears on them a lot more. So if you stay in that middle 90%, the cells are gonna be really happy and they're gonna be much less likely to degrade. They're gonna degrade a lot slower. So I would say the 90-10 rule, if you can do it, is absolutely something you can do. It sucks to lose 20% of the capacity of your battery, sure, but if you don't, if you can live without it, I'd say go for it. Um, it might even be worth it if you're looking at, for example, like 200 amp hour cells to upgrade to 280 amp hours so that, you know, you can use only that middle 80% because, you know, maybe they'll cost more to buy the cells up front, but if they last that much longer that because you can extend the life by using only that middle 90, 90%, uh, sorry, middle 80%, then it might be worth it. The other thing is temperature, right? As I said before, don't charge uh, below freezing and you have to discharge in this range. Now, that's, granted, it's a pretty big range, right? If you can discharge between negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit and 150 degrees Fahrenheit, that's almost a 200 degree range, right? Like, that's amazing. But to be honest, these cells do not like to be there, right? These cells absolutely want to be between 15 degrees and 35 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So we're talking something like 50 degrees and like 100 degrees, oh, sorry, 15 and 35 degrees Celsius. So we're talking like, you know, 50 degrees Fahrenheit to around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, right? And really, they want to be around 70 degrees Fahrenheit that's optimal for them, right? So keep them at like room temperature. It's, they're very happy at room temperature uh, and they're particularly unhappy when they're warmer. So when you're warming these cells up, let's say they're, you know, they're sitting in like a really hot shed or they're getting sitting and getting direct sunlight for some example, I can't imagine why, but maybe. Uh, if they're really heating up, you're gonna hurt your cells in terms of their, uh, their life cycle. So try to keep the cells at a stable temperature. I'm gonna be using my cells in an off-grid setting and it's an uninsulated shed. So yeah, they're gonna get challenged by the temperature. It might go down to 40 and it might go up to 90. And I can live with that. I'm gonna to try to insulate them, but I can live with that. But just know that the better you can do in temperature, the better the cells are gonna do for you long-term.
The other thing is compression. So there's a lot of debate about compression. I've seen a lot of forums where people are discussing it. Um, I know that the new Eve data, she data sheets strongly suggest that you should compress things. So compression is when you're putting pressure on the cells, maybe with some plates or something like that, to keep them uh, basically from bulging, right? And there's a lot of debate and discussion about how much pressure to use and how to basically build contraptions because uh, that will con compress them. Because when like Eve or Li Shen or whoever is doing um, you know, tests on their cells, they're putting them under very precise, you know, machine adjusted uh, compression. Can you do that at home? Well, probably not. You can't do what they're doing, right? You don't have a, you don't have like a machine that's gonna me measure exactly how much compression and where. But you can do sort of rudimentary compression at home. You Maybe you could use some tape or maybe you could use some plywood and put them together with screws. I'll probably do a video on how I do that myself. Uh, but just know that compression can probably help your cells but I wouldn't think it's the most important. It's much more important, I'd say, to stay in that middle 80%. You're much more likely to damage your cells when you're charging at the top or fully discharging, because that is when the lithium cells in here are switching from one side of the battery to the other. Um, that, I think, is much more likely for you to get discharge, uh, bulging than, um, that's much more likely to prevent bulging than it is if you put them under compression and do the full zero to 100% capacity. So long story short, I would say try to do compression as you can, if you can. I wouldn't extremely stress about it, especially if you can stay in that middle 80% and keep them in a stable temperature. I don't think you're likely to have huge bulging issues, but compression can help. If you're going to store these for a long time, these genuinely want to be stored. So let's say you don't, you can't use them for a while. They want to be stored between 3.275 volts and 3.3 volts, 3.3 volts, right? And basically they want to be stored, um, at the lower end, typically between 20 and 40%, right? You don't wanna store these at really high voltages. You don't wanna store them at 2.5 volts, really low, but you also don't really wanna store them at really high. So I think around 3.29 or something like that, um, or you know, 3.28, that would be my ideal. But if, you, if you're not gonna use them for a long time, store them at around at less than half percent, sorry, less than half of their full capacity, around 40%. Obviously, if you're using them for standby batteries, let's say you know, you're just charging them up uh, you're not using solar, you're just going to leave them fully charged so that when you have a power outage or you need them for some emergency setting, um, then you then you know, then you're going to use them. That's fine. Obviously, they're not going to last forever. Uh, and you have to use some of you know, you have to damage the cells a little bit or kind of leave them in a suboptimal state at around 100%. But even then, you can probably just go from 100 to 90%, you'll lose that 10% of capacity, but your cells might last a lot longer for you if you do that too. So try to store them lower if you can. I understand that some people have settings when they want to keep them at 100% and they have to stand by at 100%. That's fine. Just know that it will affect the life cycle of the cells. Um, the other thing is really high uh, charge and discharge rates are also not going to be great for your cell's life cycle, right? Um, if you can, something like 0.5C or even 0.2C, that's going to be most gentle on your cells, right? Um, if you're using these really big cells, like 280 amp hour cells, I can't see a world where you're going to consistently pull, you know, 280 amps out of each cell, or you're going to charge, for example, at 280 amps per cell. That's amazing if you can do it, but um, I don't see that's actually going to be a problem. If you have those kind of power supply or demand needs, obviously you're gonna wear your cells out faster. Um, but generally speaking, if you're using big cells, you're probably at a very safe charge and discharge rate, right? You're probably gonna be using 0.2 or 0.5C. But my point is, if you can use a lower charge and discharge rate, go for it. But if the more you stress your cells, the more you pull them at 1C or close to 1C, or even if you charge them at really high rates, you are more likely to sort of shorten their life cycle. Um, so generally speaking, charge and discharge at lower rates. And um, when I say C, I mean C is the, the amp hour capacity of the battery. So these are 280 amp hour capacity batteries. If you charge them at 280 amp hours, you're charging them at 1C. And 0.5C is half, so 140 amp hours. So one last thing that is absolutely important that you really can't forget that I almost forgot is that these cells, the actual aluminum body of these cells is positive. It has a positive charge relative to the negative terminal. So all these batteries are wrapped, all these cells are wrapped in a, in a blue shrink wrap or some sort of wrapping, right? But let's say you wore that blue shrink wrap away, you removed it. If you put a voltmeter, a po the positive of the voltmeter here and the negative of the voltmeter here, you'd measure the voltage of the battery, right? So this is not neutral. The actual metal casing of the battery is not neutral. It's battery positive, right? So what does that mean? Well, that means that if you make a mistake, let's say you accidentally damage your cell and there's some exposed metal here, right? And then you accidentally touch that while you're touching the negative of the cell. That means the power could flow from the cell to you, right? That's a huge fire hazard, safety risk, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So 
you have to A, be really, really careful to protect the wrapping of these cells. But B, when you do finally put all these cells together, it might be a really good idea to put like maybe something that's insulating, uh, not conducting electricity between each cell. Maybe uh, it's something as thin piece of paper or maybe a little bit of cardboard or something like a really thin piece of plywood or maybe plastic, whatever you can think of. But you might wanna put something small, small and thin between your cells so that if you do accidentally have a, uh, some sort of error, you won't have some sort of accident, con accidental connection between the cells or somehow create a fault that could allow you to hurt yourself or damage your cells or damage, uh, you know, dam or have the cells damage, you know, the case that they're in. So, uh, but most importantly, I just want everyone to be aware that under this blue wrapping is the metal casing of the cells and that has a positive charge associated with it. That's not something I see discuss a lot, but like a lot of these top things, you can see how you could potentially peel these off. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use these cells. But um, if you got in there, absolutely, there is a charge associated with the case of the cells. It is battery positive and the negative, there will be a, the, the voltage between the cell casing and the negative will be the actual voltage of the cell. And it's a real safety risk and a real hazard to you and the cells if this, if this packaging is removed at all, okay? So just be aware of that. Anyway, I hope this video was super useful. Uh, please like or subscribe. Please ask any questions or comments below. I'm happy to answer questions. I know there's a lot of debate about a lot of these topics that I've covered, particularly like top and bo bottom balancing, et cetera. But um, uh, I, if you, and if you've got opinions, I want you to share them, but please ask your questions. The other thing is, if you have things that you'd like me to talk about, um, I think I'm gonna do a video on how to set your solar charge controller settings and things like that. Um, I'm gonna be doing a video on how, you know, actually installing these in my own setup. Uh, but if you've got any ideas for videos or things like that, please let me know, I'm always open to them. So anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I know it's a little bit long, I really appreciate it. Uh, and please like or subscribe, that, that's great for me.